Hi guys, Jangro here, and welcome to this Belhelsia 5 series. In this episode, we're going to get started on Applied Energistics 2. So whether you've been reluctant to get going on that, or if you just want to learn the new stuff about Applied Energistics 2, or if you've got some inventory issues and you don't even know what to do about it, this is the episode for you. We're going to go through getting started with Applied Energistics 2 in this, and we're going to continue in the next episode or two after this until we are doing full-on auto crafting with Applied Energistics. So stick around. Before we get started, let me just quickly say you can check us out on Twitch TV slash Jangro. We're always playing on the current video series on our channel. All right, let's get on with it. In the new version of Applied Energistics 2, we're on 1.19.2 of Minecraft. There have been some significant changes to Applied Energistics. First of all, crystals now grow like amethyst, and there's no more growing Certus Quartz crystals and Fluix crystals or Fluix dust with seeds and water. So we're going to talk about all the new mechanics for getting your Certus and Fluix crystals. And you also just need to find one meteorite. Before, you had to find several meteorites probably to get all of the inscriber presses. So let's find a meteorite. And to do that, the easiest thing to do is to just take a look at your map. This is us right here. We've got a meteorite right over our heads. This is actually one of the reasons we settled here. That's been all mined out. If we look around the world, it's pretty easy to spot meteorites. Here's a big one surrounded in lava. There's another one over here cut to the side of a mountain. Uh, that's actually really cool over there. If you cannot find a meteorite on your map by just exploring around, there's another way to find one. And that is with a meteorite compass. So the first thing we need to do is create a charger. And a charger needs power. We're just going to plop it down right here. If you just put a compass in it, just right click, compass goes in it. If you have a power source, um, you can power a charger. I think it's just on the top and the bottom. But there's a new thing here, a wooden crank. And if we just put that on top here, shift right click, we get the crank on there. If we right click, it spins it. And we can charge things manually. And now we've got a meteorite compass in here. I think that was about, I think that was about 10 turns. And the meteorite compass is going to tell us it's where the meteorite is. It's pointing to the one, clearly, that's right above our heads. We don't really need this, but here we go. Let's head on over to the meteorite that is up here, surrounded by lava that we saw on our map. I think it's right over here. Okay, let's head on over here with our jetpack. And right in the center of a meteorite is, I think it's called a mysterious, mysterious box or something. Interestingly, the atomic disassembler doesn't work, but the netherite pickaxe will work. We need at least iron to mine skystone. And down here in the middle, Mine this all out. Is a mysterious cube. And if we break the mysterious cube, we get all four inscriber presses. You used to have to fly around and you'd maybe get one or two of these per meteorite. So it's got it got much easier. And this is how Certus Quartz grows now. Just like Amethyst with budding crystals. And you can see some of these are budding, and some of these are just regular Certus Quartz blocks. So I'm just going to break these regular Certus Quartz blocks and take them back with us. Now, if we don't have any way to move these, we can just leave them here, dig out all around them, and they'll start to grow Certus Quartz. If we break a partial, a small Certus Quartz bud, we're going to get dust. If we let it grow to be a full size, we'll get Certus Quartz crystals from it. But we're gonna take these with us. So if you have a way to move blocks, you can take these back to the base. I have a Silk Touch pickaxe right here. Let's just test it on one of these. Get flawed, we've got damaged, flawless, chipped. Let's test it on the flawed one. Okay, we did get it from Silk Touch. We can also use these cardboard boxes from mechanism which are really easy just for just need four sawdust all right let's head back
You also want to get some sky stone from those meteorites. I already have a lot. But we're going to need some sky stone to get controllers. Not a lot. Okay, here we are back home again. Okay, let's head up here to where I've been setting up a big giant room above where we're going to start setting up applied energistics. And I have two chargers over here. These are powered with actual FE. And we just, these are charged crystals right here. You get those by putting a Certus Quartz crystal right in there. We'll see that in a second. Over here, I've got some full Certus Quartz clusters. And if we break these, we get Certus Quartz crystals. And with some fortune, we got 12 of those. So we can get a lot that way, but it takes them a long time to grow. So if we just tuck those in here, they get charged pretty quickly. Okay. We've still got our crystals here. Let's just our budding, our budding Certus Quartz blocks. And let's just unbox these. This isn't optimal because one of their sides is blocked, but these will start to grow more Certus Quartz on five of those sides at least. There's ways to accelerate this later with an accelerator, but we need to craft a bunch of stuff to get there. So what we're going to do next is work toward uh, an ME controller, an ME drive, and a crafting terminal with an item storage cell. And to make all these things, we are going to need these processors. And to make the processors, we need some circuits. That's what these presses are for. Uh, we also need to make these storage components, which where we can store 256,000 items. We need some 64K. For, to make that, we need 16K. And you can see all these processors that we need for these. And it comes down to charge Certus Quartz. To make the inscriber, that's pretty easy. To make this Fluix ME glass cable, we need Fluix crystal. So we're going to need a bunch of Fluix crystal as well. This quartz fiber needs Certus Quartz dust. So we need these kind of basic elements. Certus Quartz dust, which we get from our, from our buds. Charge Certus Quartz crystal, which we get by charging Certus Quartz. The Certus Quartz itself we get from, as we saw, from our budding Certus Quartz blocks. And Fluix... Dust comes from Flux Crystal. Flux Crystal, we have to grow it. This in-world transformation. We basically have to throw charged surface quartz crystal, redstone dust, and nether quartz into water, and we'll get two Flux Crystals. So let's just do that quickly. We've got a bucket of water here. Let's make ourselves a little pool. We throw another quartz, a redstone, and a charged Certus Quartz Crystal right in here. And those three things there, you can see them turning into Fluix Crystal. So that's that's kind of annoying. To be honest, you got to make the Fluix Crystal by hand, but you might be able to hear below me. I've got some villagers down there, and I have got a special surprise villager that i want to introduce you to let's grab some potatoes to sell to the farmer and we'll grab some potatoes from right here where we have our potato overflow and this is the back way in and right here oh let's okay now we've got some emeralds this guy right here you can get a fluix Researcher, I think he's called, which is an applied energistics villager. This is brand new too. You, his block is a charger, so that's really easy to make. So get yourself a villager and put him behind one of these charger blocks. And he has got, he'll buy Certus Quartz Crystal and charge Certus Quartz Crystal. He'll buy silicon, which we make by smelting Certus Quartz dust. But most importantly, he sells Fluix Crystal and slime balls. So this guy is fantastic. So we can just, we're gonna be buying our Fluix crystals from that guy. Okay, let's head back up and take a look at the inscriber. We're just gonna kind of set up here temporarily. I've got an inscriber and we'll just put this down right, right here. It does need power. We'll connect it to our 
No, it says it's offline, but that's only because it's not on a on a network, but it's still getting power and will work. So let's take a look at these inscriber recipes. So in order to make, say, an engineering processor, we need a printed engineering circuit and redstone with printed silicon. This is the final stage. Printed silicon comes from silicon in an inscriber silicon press. So that's a silicon press with an inscriber in it. I mean, with a silicon press inscriber in it. This silicon itself we get by smelting certus quartz dust. The other part of this is the printed engineering circuit, which comes from putting a diamond in with an engineering press. So we have these presses here. Let's just grab them all. Grab some service quartz dust. Let's get a smelter here so we can make some, so we can make some silicon. And there we go, we have silicon. And if we put silicon in the inscriber with the silicon press, it does its thing and we have the printed silicon. Likewise, if we put, let's see, a calculation press with the Certus Quartz Crystal, we're gonna get a printed calculation circuit. And now if we put this in with the printed silicon, we need some redstone. We have a calculation processor. Now we can't stack things in here. This is all very manual. So we need a whole bunch of all of the different kinds of processors to progress. So we need to set up some sort of automation for this. Now it says right here that we can insert from the top for this. We can insert from the bottom for this one, insert from left, right, back and front, insert extract from left, right, back and front. So if we can insert things into the bottom, which we can in modded, we can use uh, logistical transporters, for example, and push things up into the bottom. But one thing we can do here is with a wrench, another quartz wrench, you can also make a Certus quartz wrench. They're right here. They have the same recipe, just with a different thing. So I made another quartz wrench because that's cheaper. And with this wrench, we can right click and rotate. So now the inscriber is sitting on its side. So the top is actually over here. The bottom is over here, and we can use hoppers to put stuff into it and hoppers to pull stuff out of it. And we can start to automate this process. Now, we can put a bunch of inscribers together with the different presses in them, kind of dedicated to each type of item, and we'll set that up next. Okay, I've already got all the inscribers. We need an inscriber for each of the four presses, and then a fifth one for the final assembly stage in, the, in this process. So we're going to put one of these right here and then we're going to put three hoppers on this side and a hopper on this side and a hopper right here so this is going to get the printed silicon circuit and these three things are going to be for the, the logic engineering and calculation processors as they come through and redstone is going to come in this one right here now in order for this to work properly like we saw before, we need to turn this on its side. So the printed circuits are going to come in this side. The printed silicon is going to come in this side, the bottom and the top. And the redstone is going to come in the side. And it will do that final stage process that we were looking at. So now we need inscribers here, here, and here, and an inscriber here. This one is, like I said, the, the silicon press. And we put that right here and it's going to get silicon in from the side, which is actually up here on the top. And so we're going to put a hopper up here too. We also need hoppers while we're at it here, here, and here. And these also need to be rotated on their sides. So everything is on its side turned once and we'll put a logic press in this one which is which needs gold we'll put a calculation press in this one which needs certus quartz we'll put the engineering press in this one which needs a diamond 
Now, because these are turned on their side, the hopper is going to insert the diamond, quartz, and gold ingot like that. And as a final step, we can just put some barrels in here. For all the inputs, we'll put one right here. So this one is going, but oh, we don't want a barrel up here. We need a furnace because this is going to get the silicon like that. So we set the furnace up. We put some dust in here. That's going to cook this dust and push the silicon down into here as soon as one cooks. And that is not doing anything because it's not powered yet. This one here we're, is logic. We need gold and diamonds and certus quartz. So this one, it's, it's and in a logic press, it needs a gold, needs gold ingots. And those are just getting dropped right in there. This one needs certus quartz crystals. And those are getting dropped right there. And this one needs diamonds. And that's getting right there. And we need redstone for the final stage. We need a lot of redstone. So now, once we power this, each one needs power. And once I connect this one, I do this and move quickly. Everything is going to start working. Okay, everything's powered. See, they're all doing their thing, pressing, sending them down into these hoppers, and they're all getting queued up to go into this final stage. Now, this has nowhere to go, so it's just kind of stuck here. So let's do the final part, and we'll put a barrel right here with the a logistical transporter right here since we can just pull stuff like that and configure eight items right click here and that's going to pull things out as soon as they're done so all these printed logic circuits are coming through here and they're going to cycle through here and we're getting all the different processors let's move the engineering circuit up front so we can see one of those come through Now we've got an engineering processor. So these things will take a while to come through. We'll continue to feed this. We can put, eventually we can put speed upgrades on these things and it'll go much faster. Now, as a final thing, let's build our ME storage system. Now, I, I went ahead and crafted everything so you didn't have to watch me go through that. I'll talk about how to make these things as, as we place them. So first thing is an ME controller. We'll put that right here. And because it's connected to power, it lights up. It says it's online. The controller is made with four Fluix crystal, an engineering processor, which means a diamond, and four skystone block. And the skystone block is smelted skystone. So all pretty easy stuff. Technically, we don't need a controller until we have more than eight nodes connected to a cable a segment, a network segment, um, but we it acts as a, as a power converter. So if we didn't have the controller, we'd need a an energy acceptor. So I figured I might as well just go ahead and, and make the controller. So from here, we can put on top of it, Fluix cable. So we have Fluix cable and we have Fluix smart cable. And they work the same. They transfer power and data. But the smart cable just tells us how many channels we have active visually. Uh, each side of the controller can support up to 32 channels because you can use a dense cable, which has 32 channels. The smart cable supports eight channels. The dense cable is pretty expensive, so we're not going to go there. Let's look at those. The 
Glass cable is quartz fiber and a couple flux crystal. Um, the quartz fiber is sort of quartz dust and some any kind of glass. And the smart cable is there it is. Fluix smart cable. Covered cable. Fluix ME covered cable with redstone and glowstone. The Fluix ME covered cable is some wool and uh, the glass cable that we made already. So it's it's pretty expensive to get to the smart cable, but it's pretty useful. So I just wanted to show it to you. We don't technically need it right now. We're going to put a crafting terminal on here. The crafting terminal is pretty tricky to make. Crafting table, calculation processor, which is a Certus Quartz, and an ME terminal. And an ME terminal has a bright illumination, or any kind of illuminated panel, which is it's easy stuff to make. It's tricky though is the formation core and the annihilation core. The formation core is just some more of these these things here: logic processor, charged or regular service quartz, fluid dust, and the uh, annihilation core is similar. All right, so now we can we can right click on this terminal, and it's basically a crafting terminal mixed with storage. We can't put anything in it yet because we don't have any actual storage in it. So let's put that on here. Put an ME drive, connect it right here. It's online and we can see it's using one channel. I didn't need to actually connect it with a cable, but I wanted you to see that it's using one of eight channels. Now the ME drive is made with, it's pretty expensive, couple diamond engineering processors, flux cable, iron to get the ME drive. And, in the ME drive, we can put these. I made a couple of 16K storage cells because it is really grindy to make the bigger ones. The 16K storage cell, well, let's look at the 256K. The 256K storage cell is made with a, a 256K storage component, which is made with three 64K storage components. Each of those is made with three 16K storage components. Each of these is made with three 4K, and each of these is made with three 1K storage components. So just to get to 16, we had to make like um, nine of these 1K storage components, and I did two of them. So that was a lot of that was a lot of work. But again, all the same ingredients, and we just put these right here. And something that is important to think about here is that while they hold 16K bytes of data, which is not 16,000 items. I'm not sure what the conversion is for bytes to, to items, but they each hold only 63 types of items. So if you put 63 different pickaxes, they don't, they're all unique. So you're only gonna be able to put 63 items in that drive, but if you, you but you can fill it up with 16,000 cobblestone. That's only using one of the types. So these are lit up, they're green. And now our terminal, we can put stuff in. So let's put the flux crystal in here, the barrel and some steel and these stone bricks. Okay, and you can see them here. And if we look over in our drives, this one now has four types and it's using 523 bytes which is more than the number of items. So not sure how that conversion works. And if we go get something that we have a lot of, let's grab some more stuff. So now we have these things here. We can sort by a number of items. So you can see what we have the most of. Sort by item name, sort by mod. I like to sort by number of items, descending. So the most things are at the top. Uh, you can put you can put fluids and items in here. We can put craftable. We can put, uh, this will show items that are craftable once we have patterns and crafting automation. Um, and there's other settings here. We can We can change how this thing behaves. I like to use JEI for the search. So then when we search, the search box is gone. We just use JEI to search. 
now when we're when we want to crap we want to get something out of our inventory we can just type in here like certus or lapis and it filters our display based on our search term pretty cool and there you go we've got our me crafting terminal and storage and we can start to get a grip on our inventory situation. We'll continue to make some more storage cells. I don't like to go straight to one big storage cell because again, it only holds 63 items. So I start out with some smaller ones. You can actually take these apart. If we have an empty one here and we shift right click in the air, we can break it into its components. And now we can use these 16K storage components for crafting a bigger one. But let's put it back together again. There we go. All right, we'll probably run the cable downstairs. So we'll have the crafting terminal down there or, or add a new one down there on the first floor. Um, keep this up here as our kind of maintenance area while we build out this giant AE2 room. We're gonna set up uh, a huge auto crafting setup with peer-to-peer -peer networks, all kinds of stuff going on here. So we will get going on auto crafting in the next episode. Okay, I think that's going to do it for this episode. We went from zero all the way to ME storage with the Platinum Logistics 2 with all of kind of semi-automated uh, processor processing crafting system back there. We can completely automate that, and we'll do that in an upcoming episode. But in the meantime, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it. Subscribe to the channel to keep up with this Valhelsia 5 series, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you.